In this video, we're going to be looking at the domain and range of exponential functions. And interestingly, what we'll find is that as we describe the domain and range of these, we'll actually discover some very important properties about the function itself. So first, let's make sure what we, or that we know what we are looking for when I say domain and range. Domain is the collection of all the allowable x values for a function while range is the collection of all the allowable y values for the function. Another way of looking at this is if I pick an x value for the domain, let's say 2, by looking straight up or straight down from 2 on the x-axis, can I find the graph? And so if I trace down from 2, there's the graph, so 2 is part of the domain. Same for 5, and for 6, and for negative 3, and really for any of the x values that we see on the graph. For the range, it works the same way. I can pick any range value I would like, say 2, and see if by looking left or right from 2 I can find the graph. And so here I can, here I can, um, and notice there are some points on the graph where that becomes a little fuzzy, and that is what we are going to explore further. But before we look too deeply at those fuzzy cases, let's look at some cases where things are a little easier to see. So with this particular graph, I want to find the domain and to represent that domain with an inequality. And this inequality is going to show how far to the left the function goes and how far to the right the function goes. So let's start by looking at how far to the left uh, this uh, graph goes. And so we're looking at the x-axis and we want to look for the part of the red line that is as far to the left as possible. And so we see it gets all the way to right here, which is at x equals negative 3. So we'll write down that negative 3, and then we'll go hunting to see how far this goes to the right. And now I just trace it in the other direction until the function stops, and it stops right here at x equals 5. So now what I want to do is I want to make this into an inequality. I know all of my x values that include the function are between 5 and negative 3, so I'm going to write an x in there to just represent physically in this case that the x is in between them. And now I want to use inequalities to show uh, whether that x is bigger than negative 3 or smaller than negative 3. So in this case, we want our x values to be bigger than negative 3. And since there's no open circle there, we can go ahead and say this is inclusive. That is, it can be equal to negative 3 as well. And then if we look at 5, all our x values have to be less than or equal to 5. So the domain of this particular function would be negative 3 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 5, which is just a fancy way of saying it's all the x values between negative 3 and 5. Now we can look at a situation where, and if you look closely, I've changed the graph ever so slightly. What you can see is that I have changed what is happening on the left side of this graph. So let's do this again. I still want to find the domain, so we're looking for how far to the left this goes. So I trace the graph all the way to the left, and it continues right off the edge of the graph. That means, or is implied by this graph, that this will continue on forever. So when you see this go off the edge of the graph, you can assume that it continues on forever. So there is no limit to what's going on on the left side, so we're going to write down nothing. We're not going to worry about it. Now if we look to the right side, we can trace to see how far it goes to the right, and it stops just as it did before at x equals 5. So we can go ahead and write that down. And now we just want to compare this to x. All the x values are everything to the left of 5, so that is to say everything less than or equal to 5. So it's just like the last one we did, except since there's no boundary on the left side, we can just leave that part off and describe the domain as everything less than or equal to 
5. So let's look at this for the other side because it's really just a similar idea. Here you can see the function again cuts off at negative 3, but notice over here it continues on. So we can do our usual. We look for the left hand boundary, which is at x equals negative 3. And we look for the right hand boundary, and this is where we learn something interesting about our function. This continues right off the edge of the graph. And remember, when this happens, you are to assume that the graph continues on infinitely. Well, if we're using that very elementary definition of domain that we looked at earlier, uh, is, or can you find the graph for that x value? So at 3, it's right there. At 4, it's right there. And at 5, it's right there. And at 6, it's not obvious that this continues. It feels possible that you would continue up from 6 forever and not interact with the function. But one of the neat and difficult things to understand about exponentials is that this function, this graph, really will continue forever off to the right. Every x value will have some y value, but it is a property of exponentials that those y values will be really, really large. And so even though it's not contained on the graph, because this continues on forever, 6 and 7 and 8 and 9 and everything out through infinity will be part of this. So just as before, when it continued off the left side, we didn't write anything for that. So when it continues off the right side, we don't write anything for that either. And so we simply say that all our x values have to be greater than or equal to negative 3. Now we can look at the situation where it doesn't stop on either side. So we look to the left, continues on forever. We look to the right, and it continues on forever. When this happens, we say that the domain of the function is all real numbers. Now that real part might not feel important, but it is. When you say this, make sure you say all real numbers, because later on in Algebra 2, you will learn about something called imaginary numbers that will come into play. I'm not making that up, that's a real thing. And so we need to specify that this is all real numbers. Now that we've looked at how to find the domain, let's talk about the range. Whereas domain is a discussion of how far to the left and right the graph goes, range is a discussion of how far up and down the graph goes. And exponential functions, remember when I said we would find out some cool properties of exponential functions from this? Here is one of the neatest. All exponential functions have this horizontal line that is a boundary either to the top or bottom of the function. And here you can see this dotted blue line, and you can see how this exponential function gets really, really close to that dotted blue line. But it will never, ever touch it that blue line that it never ever touches, and you don't actually have to draw this in on the graph, I just drawed it in so that you can see it, is called an asymptote. So that is a fun word, feel free to try and pronounce that for yourself because it is fun to say. And this graph will approach but never ever touch this asymptote at y equals 2. So when we go to describe the range of an exponential function, Really, all we have to look for is that asymptote. So in this case, the asymptote is at 2. So I would say y for the range. We used x for the domain. Now we'll use y for the range. All the y values of the graph are greater in this case than the asymptote at 2. So our range is simply y is greater than 2. Now notice this is not inclusive. y cannot be equal to 2 because it never ever touches uh, that line. Now the reason for this is as we move to the left, you can think about uh, dividing by the base as we go here. And if you continually divide by that positive number for the base, you're going to get a smaller and smaller and smaller value, provided that base is greater than 1. And so that value keeps getting smaller, but it'll never ever get to 0. And so the function will approach that asymptote. Now it can also be the case that that asymptote is the maximum value. So in this case, uh, we can see a function that is turning downward like this. Uh, 
uh, this will happen if we have a negative value for a and then a positive value for b. The, it will get larger and negative as it goes on. This particular graph is shifted upward and over so that the uh, y-intercept isn't exactly what a is, which we will discuss later. But in any case, we can see the asymptote here at y equals 5. And so this graph will approach, but never ever touch, 5. And everything on the graph is below that. So we would say that y is going to be less than 5. Notice that is not less than or equal to, but rather less than 5. And that is how you write the domain and range for an exponential function.